Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. I'm in Luminar Neo today and I've got a quick tip for you. And this quick tip is about how to control what I consider to be the most powerful individual slider in Luminar. There's one slider that you can do so much with. Let me rephrase that. There's one slider that does so much. It's incredibly powerful as an individual slider. I think it is the most powerful one in Luminar. The challenge is you can't control it. It just does what it does. Until now, there's a way to control this tool and really allow you to give a nice, subtle, but impactful pop to a photo without going over the top. We're gonna to talk about that in this quick tip video. Let's go, I've got a photo here. I've done Develop Raw and Super Contrast. So, started like that, it's currently like that. And so, this tip and this slider works on any photo. Every photo doesn't matter. It's capable of doing a lot to a photo. If you think I'm talking about Accent AI, you're right, uh, I am talking about Accent AI, which is right here in Enhance AI. And as you may know, Accent AI, I mean, it does a lot of stuff to a photo. I'll just drag it all the way. I don't recommend doing that. But if you look at it, it really pops that photo. The thing is, it's doing too much because it's controlling light, it's color, it's contrast, it's all kinds of things. And it's easy, I think, to get over the top and just depend on this tool to kind of do the heavy lifting for you. I don't recommend that, but I do, do very much do like to use this tool as a last little touch. Um, the problem is, like if you only use it two or three or five or whatever, you get a little bit of benefit, but you don't see much. It's You, you got to start getting a little bit higher to really see something. Again, that depends on the photo. This is a dark night scene. I'm also going to show you this tip on a sunset. But the tip is, you can drag this to 50, 60, 70, and it's way too much. But now... There's a fun, exciting little thing in Illuminar Neo called Luminosity Masking. So you can see what this uh, Accent AI has done to the photo. It's really popped it. But for me, I'm looking at the photo. It's a night scene. I expect to see some shadow. And the highlights are fine. I don't need any work on the highlights. I don't really need any work on the shadows. But the mid midtones could use a nice little pop. That's where Luminosity Masking comes in so, so handy. And why I like to use Luminosity Masks with Accent AI. So I can just come in here and I've isolated some of these mid-tone areas and then I like to do the fade. If you're not familiar with luminosity masks, I highly recommend you check out that video. But I'm going to do a little bit of a fade here and now I've got this luminosity mask kind of just touching, kind of gently touching certain parts of the photo, primarily the mid-tones which is here, but also fading kind of smoothly into the shadows and the highlights. So it's not going to hit all the shadows the stuff covered in this red or pink overlay is only what's impacted. So there's plenty of shadow down there, plenty of shadow there, even shadow here in the foreground. I like it just like that. So this is a way to do that. And using specifically the midtones is a great way to impact a photo like this because the highlights are really bright. The shadows are really dark. I want that contrast in my photo. Using Accent AI without a luminosity mask and dragging that pretty far is going to um, highlight or brighten those shadows too much. But with a luminosity mask, you end up with a much more subtle implementation and a nice little touch, a nice little pop on the photo. So let me show you the before and the after, right? Before and after. That's using a luminosity mask with Accent AI. And even at 67, which is really high, way higher than I would really normally ever use. But you can uh, obviously come in here and adjust that amount. So I could pull that down in the 40s if I want and still have a nice little pop on my image before and after. I want to show you this also on a landscape. Okay, here's a beautiful landscape from Iceland and another example of where I would use this little trick. Now, I've not completely edited this photo, but I did use uh, Develop Raw, Super Contrast, and a little bit of the new Twilight Enhancer just to bring up some of that look of this beautiful, stunning sunset that we saw. That's what it was like before, and that's what it's like now. But again, I want to give it a subtle little pop. I just don't want to go over the top. And so you can do this other ways. If you get into develop and different color tools and all that and start playing around, sure. But the quick, easy way, and that's what this quick tip is about, is coming in with Accent AI. And, you know, maybe I drag it to 50 or 60. I'm at 60. I really like the sky and the water. I hate what it's doing to these greens and all this stuff in the foreground. Luminosity mask to the rescue. So let's go grab that luminosity mask. And what we're going to do is, remember, I liked it in the sky and the water. Well, those are the brighter parts, which are more like the highlights. I don't want this adjustment to go into the shadows. So, yes, I could use a brush and come in and paint that in. But um, the nice thing about this is I can just isolate these tonal areas really quickly, right? So you can see how that's 
adjusting where this luminosity mask is going to fall. I kind of blend it in, and now I'm touching the sky and the water without going into anything that's in the foreground. And now my adjustment is very subtle, and all that over-the-top kind of neon-looking green that was in the foreground, no longer there, but I'm still at 60 on Accent AI. So if you look at the sky before, and the water, right, the waterfall, I should say, not the puddle or pool of water, but the sky and the waterfall itself before and after. Accent AI, massively amazing tool. I love it, but I'm always just trying to control it because there's a tendency, I think, to drag it and drag it and drag it. And it's fun, and I love it. And, and I do it in some videos and in some photos, but I'm usually focused more on control. And even at a high level of 60, you're still controlling it because you're controlling where it goes in terms of specific tonal areas with the luminosity mass. So again, before and after, massive, massive impact on a photo with really just a tiny, tiny bit of work. Luminosity mask, drag the slider, you can be done in terms of adding that little extra oomph, that little extra pop to your photo. That's a quick tip for today, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. You guys take care. And until next time, adios.